you, musicians, singers, media, sound, ushers, um, and especially nursery. <laughs> God bless the nursery ministry. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we are going to turn to the most popular psalm in the whole Bible. The most popular psalm. We're going to start reading in verse 4. The most popular psalm, verse 4. <coughs> There's a book that's written by a man by the name of Joel Osteen. And this book is called Your Best Life Now. If you've read that book, we'll pray for you after the service. But this is this book that is it's a it's a number one seller, seller. Everyone loves this book, Your Best Life Now. And Pastor Mitchell used to mock this book for, for the days. The reason being is because our best life for the Christian is not now. Can you say amen? And many people, many Christians are living for their best life to be here on earth our best life is in heaven and that's where we're going and that's why we can have joy no matter what happens and if you serve God for your best life now I'm telling you, you probably won't make it to heaven because you'll get disappointed because it's not your best life now we don't face tomorrow because life is comfortable we face tomorrow because he lives that's why we face tomorrow and so I'm going to preach this final session uh, this sermon series titled chasing carrots it's like echoing up here. Is it coming through the, um, is it, I think it's coming through, through that at the top there. Uh, you can check that out for me. But we're going to uh, chasing carrots. And tonight we're going to look at comfort and chasing pillows. Chasing pillows. Because I think some people, their, their greatest need in life, the greatest goal in life is like, if I could have a, a cushiony life, everything will be fine. But that's, that's, that's not life, all right? So let's read Psalm 23, just a couple of verses. And I'll reference this throughout and then at the end. David says this, he goes, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. This will be a great song one day. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's pray. God, we're grateful for your word, grateful for this night, and thank you, Lord, that you are our comfort, God. You are our healer, Lord. Help us not to search in this world for comfort, God, and for searching for a cushy life, but let us lay our lives down at your feet, knowing that you know best, and let us be in the will of God. Let the Holy Ghost touch every single life this evening, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody says with a shout, amen. amen. You could turn this up in the fallback just a little bit for me. That'll, that'll help. So let's look at two points this evening. First, I want to look at confronting comfort zones. Confronting comfort zones. You could keep turning it up in the fallback a lot more for me, please. Comfort zones, that name, sh it should be renamed. If anyone ever says comfort zone, it should be renamed. Comfort zone should be renamed deadly zone. Every time there's a comfort zone, I'm telling you, it will always lead to a time where something turns deadly. The word comfort zone is this. It means a situation where one feels safe, comfortable, or at ease. And many people, this is their search in life. I just want to have a comfortable life. I just want to have a, a, a safe life and, a, and an easy life. And those things, they're, they're all right. We, we live in a generation where everything's tailored for comfort. And that's not bad. You know, I, I'm glad that I can just switch the light and the, and the lights turn on. I'm glad I don't have to start a fire, do all these other things. I'm glad when I put the microwave on, it, it, it works, right? I'm glad I can call, th you know, in Melbourne, I don't know what the number is here, but 131166 Pizza Hut, right? And you can get food delivered to your door. It's comfortable. It's, it's nice. And I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about Christians trying to live their whole life comfortable. As long as I feel comfortable. And comf comfort zones are very limiting and restriction restricting. I used this example a long time ago, but it talks about crabs. And when crabs grow, they actually don't stay in the same shell their whole life. They grow from shell to shell. And as they start to outgrow their current shell, the only way they can grow is where they leave that shell and crawl off and try and find another shell. But the problem is through that crawling, it's, it's a bit dangerous. And through that crawling to find a brand new shell, they, uh, they can get attacked. But that's where they grow the most. If they stayed in that original shell where everything's nice and comfortable, where they've got everything set out perfectly, they will never, ever grow. They'll stay the exact same. And that shell that was supposed to be their home, that was supposed to be their, their comfort, eventually dies small. It could have gone on to be stronger. It could have gone on to all these other things, but it stayed. And that shell, that comfort zone for, uh, for that crab doesn't, isn't just a, a comfort zone. It turns into a coffin because it never decided to move forward. It stayed in its comfort zone. And let me tell you, church, if you chase comfort for the rest of your life, your comfort zone could as well be your coffin. 
They, you might die one day, one day, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. But I mean, a lot of people die a lot younger than that. Not physically, but spiritually. They're not living for God. They're not moving forward. They get buried at that age, but they died a long time ago because they're not moving forward. This is a church. What makes you comfortable can ruin you. It's very dangerous. Luke 12, Jesus gives us an example here. It talks about a man who wanted a comfortable life. It says in verse 19, he says, And I'll say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. And then whose will those things be whom you have provided? Here he's saying, let's just take it easy. That sounds like a good song. Should we write a song? You've got to take it easy. Live your life, right? And this is how he's living. And God says, no, 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 you're a fool for living like that. He said, that's not how we're supposed to live. Comfort zones are unbiblical. You will not find in the Bible, live your best life now. Tell you what you will find in the Bible. (laughs) Take up your cross, (laughs) deny yourself, and follow me. But yet we come to church thinking, if I just come to church, I'll have a comfortable life. That's not biblical. You will have a comfortable, everlasting life, but it is not talking about this life. God wants to take you out of the comfort zone. Anybody here good at blowing balloons? I need someone that can blow balloons. I can't blow balloons properly. Does anyone, can anyone help me with that? Thanks, Loma. Appreciate that. I'll give you two of them. You just blow one of them up. Yeah, give it a, yeah, it's right. That's what happens when you sit at the front. So these balloons, right, as Loma blows that one up, this is very, a very small piece of rubber. It's, it's, it's nothing. It, it's pointless, right? I'll just do one. One's fine. Can you, do, can you tie it? I'm not good at tying it either, especially holding a microphone. Right? And so this balloon, it's just this little piece of rubber. It's nothing. It's, it's pointless. It's got, it's got no purpose at all. And un- until something's done to it, then things change. Then things, then th- things move. This is why I didn't want to, t- this is why I didn't want to tie it. Because they're hard to tie. I hate tying, but they always blow up in my face. The balloon needs to grow, needs to expand, needs some pressure. Thank you very much for that. Why don't we give love my hand? Thank you for that. Amen. So this is some people. You see a problem this big. And you say, God, I can't do that because I'm only this big. And you live your whole life being this big when God had called you to be this big. But, Pastor, I don't want to be stretched. I don't want, to, I don't want that pressure. I, I, don't want, I don't want to be, I don't want to grow. I don't want to expand. I, I prefer to stay like this. And God's like, I want you to, you can be this. And then we have a problem. I should have got a few balloons. But then we have like a small balloon and we don't fulfill our potential. Oh, okay, I'll do a little bit. And we stretch just a bit. But we don't fulfill our potential in Christ. So church, what represents you, your life? Your comfort level, is, this, is it this? Or is it like 10 times the size? Because all of us, we could be like this. All of us can grow. There's not just something special, oh, you're a pastor, that means that's your... your st-. No, absolutely not. Let me... Th- I've lived my whole life, my whole ministry outside of my comfort zone my whole life there's never been a time I'm comfortable I'm not a I'm not a public speaker that doesn't come naturally to me but hey God whatever you want man because that's where the blessing is say amen God is always calling us out of our comfort zones It'd be funny if someone again tuned in on the live stream and they just saw me holding a balloon up and say like, okay so God is always calling us or calling you out of your comfort zone He's always calling you out of your comfort zone. Think about Abraham. He was called out of his comfort zone many times. This is the first one in Genesis 12. He says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. Now we love that end part, but we just don't like the first part. I like the great nation. I just don't like the leaving part. When I was going to go out and pioneer, I had to really wrestle with this. Someone said this, all of the blessing of God is outside your comfort zone. All of the blessings of God, all the blessing of God is outside your comfort zone. When I was going to pioneer a church, I was looking at all the places in Melbourne. Actually, I wasn't looking at too many places in Melbourne. I just looked at a couple. And um, the ones that I looked at, they were close to home. <laughs> it was close to my job, so I could still stay at the same job. It was close to a place, uh, it's a place called Troganina which is where um, it was very, very cheap to live out there. At that time, you can get a three-bedroom, brand-new house. You could rent that for two ninety a week. And I was like, I can move there, 
start up because a lot of new families moving there. I can go there, I can stay at the same job, and I'm still like only 20, 25 minutes away from Footscray. So I could still keep all my friends, still stay nice and close. That's all I was thinking. And then God's like, oh, you want to be close? Get the fit out, you know what I mean? It's like, and then coming over to a new country where 290 a week will buy you like a, you know, I don't know, a doghouse. You might be able to rent that for a, a week. But every blessing I've ever received has always been outside my comfort zone. It's all, that's, that's, that's my whole life. God tested Abraham again. You look at this one, Genesis 22, and it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham, said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, take your son. Now we're getting somewhere. Your only son, whom you love, to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, I should tell you. Now, I know some of you are like, you had a bad day with your kid. You're like, gladly, here it is. Here he is, Lord. I'm out of my comfort zone. You could take him to heaven right, <laughs> right now. But you know this story. He goes to sacrifice his son, and he pulls the dagger. He ties him up. He's about, and he, they say he was about 30 years older this time. This is his only son. And he goes to, to kill him because this is what God said. And he goes to do that. And what happens? At that time, God says, stop. Now I know I can actually trust you. Because you can give me one, I can give you millions. And the Bible says now his son, the Bible called him to the, to the shore. And he says, look at the sand on the seashore. That's what your descendants are going to be like. And all of us here today are descendants of Father Abraham. Because he could step out of his comfort zone in one. I wonder what God's calling you out of your comfort zone. But you're holding on to your one. I just, it's just, it's too hard. There's so much more out there with God. Success is not comfortable. Anyone who's, who is successful in life is, does not live a comfortable life. Someone said, you need to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. I like that quote. You need to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. My pastor told me a long time, never say no to ministry. And doesn't matter how uncomfortable I was, those words ring in my ears even to today. Even to today. Because you've just got to jump out. And that's what makes people successful. Anybody here, you've heard of the glass ceiling before in life? There's a, there's a term called a glass ceiling. This is a glass ceiling. It's a metaphor used to represent an invisible barrier that holds a person from rising beyond a certain level. So you know where you need to go. You know where you could see where you need to go. But you're trying to grow and you just keep getting stopped. You keep getting stopped. You keep getting stopped. And they, they say you need to break through that gl glass barrier listen that glass ceiling listen when you break through glass what happens if you hit glass what happens you get hurt right you get cut you bleed a little bit and not many people they're not willing to bleed and so they stay at that level one when god has hundreds of level for us but you've got to break through you've got to get hit a couple of times you've got to get hurt a couple of times areas that will hurt us if you want to break through into the next level of God. Number one, you're going to have to learn how to face situations that hurt you, that will cut you, that will cause you to bleed, that will leave you bruised. J James 1, 2 and 3. Dear brothers and sisters, isn't this a beautiful scripture? When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, no one's ever done that. Everyone had a horrible day. I lost my job. Yes! So, such great joy. For you know, this is why, this is why we can have joy though, guys, when, when, the bad thing, when bad things happen. He goes, you know, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. He goes, now you can start going to some places when you go through some trials. The problem is we want level 10 without going up anyway. I don't want to break any, I don't want to get hurt, I don't want nothing. And I, listen, I've grown the most every time I stepped out of my comfort zone. That's when you grow, that's where real growth begins. Many of you got many fitness guys here and girls here. The time where you grow the most in your fitness level, it's when your muscle is at its weakest point. <laughs> is that supposed to be? We've got, oh, we've got a, uh, the section over here knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so they need to come out of their comfort zone a bit more. And so that time where your muscle's fatiguing, that's where your muscle is growing the most. With that time where you feel your lungs are going to break, where you feel like everything in you is just going to explode on the inside out, that's when you're actually doing the most improvement. And that's the same in life. When you get put through s tough situations, that's when you grow. That's when you expand. That's when you develop strength. Listen, life will give you many uncomfortable situations. We're reading about Job at the moment, aren't we? Wasn't that a horrible day? You lost all your money, all your possessions, all your children. Your wife says, just curse God and die. Well, that's a great afternoon. 
here he, we, we read about it, right? He says, in that he did not curse God. Today, he was a bit, he was a bit silly today, but he'll get there. So you're going to have to go, learn to get through situations to grow. The second area you're going to have to learn to, to break through and get cut a couple of times out of your comfort zone is relationships. Relationships will give us, A, the greatest joy, right? And the worst pain. <laughs> Why is it? Why is it? The, pe- the, the source of our greatest joy in people is, this, is the same, the biggest pain in the butt comes from the same person. How does that, how does that work? But listen, the church, we're going to have to learn to get, get through these. You're going to have to get through betrayals. You're going to have to get through failures. You're going to have to get through hurts. You're going to have to get through when you thought they were hugging you, but they were stabbing you at the same time. You know those types of people? You're going to have to learn to get through that. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? It's uncomfortable when you follow up on someone and then they, they, they just mucked you around. It's uncomfortable when you really poured out your heart to someone and they spread it to the whole church. It's uncomfortable when you, you give your heart, you go all out in, in this, but then that person turns away from you. But you've got to get out of your comfort zone. I can I hope everyone's okay at the back. <laughs> right. Number three, and this one, this is the one we all love. This is the how you get out of your comfort zone. Correction. I never want to be corrected. I never want to get out of you. Well, you need to get corrected so you can get out of your comfort zone so you can be correct. So most people prefer to be wrong. Just let me be wrong for the rest of my life. I just, I never want correction. It hurts too much. No, it, no, it doesn't. Hebrews 12, 6, for the Lord disciplines those he loves. You need to highlight that in your Bible. He punishes those that he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you like his own children. For whoever heard of a child who has never been disciplined by his father, if God doesn't discipline you as he does all children, it means that you are illegitimate and not really his child at all. So when you are being disciplined by God, when there's a correction that has to come through, through any type of leadership or through anyone, you've got to break through that glass ceiling. Yeah, it'll cut you up from time to time, but you're getting to new levels. You're rising and you're growing. You know, I was, um, at one point I was sick, I had to go to the hospital, I had I can't remember exactly what it's called, Beck will tell you, but basically I had this fluid in my, around my, in my head somewhere that was running down my, my, through my neck and then down through my back, uh, and it was just causing me a lot of issues. Like, you know when you've got a fever, but it, like you're really out of it, like you're on another planet somewhere? You know those times where you're so sick, like, I was, in, I was so sick on, on the bed that I was like, do- in my head, I was dodging trucks, right? That's how out of this world, like, I was, I was gone, I was in another planet. And so finally I got to, um, to the hospital, and then, but they had to give me, um, had to give me a needle, put all sort of fluids back in my body. But the needle hurts. It hurt. And she missed a couple of times. And if I had the strength, I would have punched her. But I didn't have the strength. Just cut that out of the live stream. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to get a call from Bastalia. Are you hitting? No, I'm not. But that needle that hurt injected life in me. And if I didn't get that needle, I would have been sick for a very long time. I had to take it in my arm. Then I had to take it in my back. I had to get fluid out of my um out of my spinal a whole st- stack of things but if it wasn't for that needle even though it hurt that's what gave me life and there's times men and women brothers and sisters you need to get corrected but it's to give you life right don't be like but i'm already sore yeah but you still need the correction to give you life and that's the point of correction it's not death it's for life so let's look secondly and finally <coughs> at the will of god in our text <coughs> excuse me david is going through a really tough time man look at verse four Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, that's a pretty full-on afternoon. I've never written that in my journal. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He is going through something extremely uncomfortable. We don't know what it is, but it's extremely uncomfortable. Let me tell you this, church. The will of God will always make you uncomfortable. The will of God will make you uncomfortable. It will take you out of your comfort zone. When you're in your comfort zone, that's your will. God's will is on the other side. It's when you step out and things start to happen. The Bible is f- filled with examples of people doing the will of God, yet hurting at the same time. And we have to marry those two. Because many times, if I do something for God, I'll never feel pain. That's not true. The more you do for God, actually, the more you feel pain. I'm sorry to break it to you. So let me give you some examples. Let's think about, let's just talk about Jesus for a moment. Can we talk about Jesus tonight? Is that okay? Here he is in the garden, in the will of God. And he says, God, take this cup away from me. This, this, this hurts, God. This is uncomfortable, God. When he was on the cross, he cried out and he said, I thirst. He was extremely dehydrated. He's uncomfortable. 
And I wish Jesus just read Joel Osteen's book, Your Best Life Now. He would have sorted all these problems. He wouldn't have to go to the cross. Everything will be fine. But here he is, in the will of God, in extreme pain. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? You have to learn to, to marry these two together. Because many people associate pain with, oh, it's obviously not God. That's not true. The Bible speaks uh, when he had the, um, when he said, take this cup away from me. He said, not my will, but your will be done. I'll leave my comfort zone. And then the Bible says that angels came to him, ministered to him, strengthened him. Then the next verse is being in agony. <laughs> in the will of God, having angels around him, still agony. And we have to learn to grasp that. There's going to be times where it's tough. When Lazarus died, the Bible says that Jesus groaned in himself. Have you ever had one of those days where you don't even have the words? You're just like, it's too much. It's too much. Abraham, like we spoke about, give me your son. In the will of God, uncomfortable. Moses, God calls you, be, you'll be a deliverer to the God's people. I can't do this. This is out of my comfort zone. I'm not, I'm, not a good, I'm not a good speaker. I can't do this. I can't do that. God says, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Imagine 40 years walking in the desert. That'll be what happens if any of the guys go in the girls' dorms through the thing. But 40 years, talk about uncomfortable. Like, we get hot here and we get over it. It's the Middle East, in, in Israel and Lebanon, they're walking in these areas in Egypt. It's burning for 40 years, yet in the will of God. And many times, we, we're the instant. If God hasn't answered my prayer in four days, hey, God, you need to sort this out. But God will be just testing you, making sure you're out of your comfort zone so he can use you. The disciples, he said, told the disciples, go out into the deep. We've labored all night. And he says, go out again. Like, go out again. Go, I'm tired. I don't want to do this. Go out again. Think about Paul, the greatest Christian to ever live. Look what he said. Verse 7. At least, at least, sorry. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. He goes, I've got so many revelations. Like, I've got more than you could ever dream of. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. That's interesting. That's interesting terminology saying it was given. God gave me this. A messenger of Satan. <laughs> to buffer me. Paul lived his whole Christian life with a thorn in inside from Satan. I don't know what it, what it was. The Bible doesn't say. Some people say it was like a medical condition. Could have been that. I reckon it was more so a spiritual condition. I reckon he had people betray him. And that pain, he couldn't, wouldn't let him go. But he didn't quit. What about this man, Simon of Cyrene? I'm going to write a sermon on this eventually. This is just a little brief part of it. But Jesus was beaten up really bad. And then so Jesus had to go up Calvary's cross, right? Uh, uh, up the hill. And, and, but he couldn't carry his cross. He was so beat up. But look what the Bible says, Matthew 27, 31. And when they had mocked him, they took off his robe and put on his own clothes and led him away to be crucified. Now, as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. So Jesus is going up the, the hill to be crucified. He can't carry the cross anymore. And they're just walking by. They're just going down life. And they just grab someone from the crowd. They said, you, come carry the cross. And the word compel means like force or pressure. They forced him. He had no choice in the matter. You carry the cross. It's not his cross. It's Jesus' cross. Simon of Cyrene, he was there for the Passover. He's supposed to be a good weekend. It's supposed to be a celebration. He's supposed to have fun with all of his family and friends, get together. But he's now surrounded by a bloody Jesus with a bloody cross, and he has to carry this cross up the hill, forced to do it. Listen, you're going to sometimes you're going to be forced to do things you do not want to do. It's forced on you. I don't, but Pastor, I didn't sign up for this. Well, either did Simon. But he was forced to do it. He was forced out of his comfort zone. He was forced. You carry this cross. And sometimes it's hard enough carrying our own crosses. That guy says, you help this other person. But this person's a pain in the butt. Keep going. Forced. Because we don't like, the, this scripture is not a good scripture. You won't hear it preached in many churches. Especially Joel Osteen, I'm telling you, he will not preach this one. Forced. I have to do this. But isn't Christianity about freedom and liberty and I could do what I want? Absolutely not. It's about doing what God wants. And there's going to be many times the cross of Christ is going to be forced upon you. And can you still live with that forcing? You know what? Christian life on a human, on an earthly viewpoint is, is horrible. From an earthly viewpoint. 
We walk by faith and not by sight. But what we see sometimes is very uncomfortable. But if you view it from God's point of view, knowing that God will never forget us and that God is for us, no problem. No, no issues. So we have a decision to make, church, and this is what it all comes down to tonight. We can either stay comfortable and make zero impact or feel the pain and make a difference. It's our choice. Stay comfortable and have no impact, never grow, or feel the pain and make a difference. And don't let me get started on Pastor Mitchell's stories. Feel the pain. Let me close with some, some blessings of stepping out. Number one, when you step out out of your comfort zone, number one, you step into the will of God. And that's, that's, that's the safest place in the world is the will of God. Even though it's uncomfortable, even though things are going to be wavy, things are going to be all over the place, in the will of God is where we belong. And that's where we, no one stepped into the will of God by staying at home. No, no one's like, I'm in the will of God, but I don't do anything. No, 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 no. We, I spoke about that Sunday, right? We're saved, uh, not by works, but we're saved to work, right? So number one, step, you step into the will of God. Number two, you step into the miraculous. When you get out of your comfort zone, now you're getting out of what you can do. Now you're stepping into what God can do. And that's where, real, that's where the real fun takes place in Christianity. You know, too many people, they live like the 11 disciples and they stay in the boat. But we're called to be like Peter and get out of the boat and, and start, to, start to experience. He walked on water. He walked on these situations in life. No matter what waves hit your life, you can continue. It's, I'm sure it was uncomfortable. I'm sure that was not what he was thinking. But he still stepped out and God blessed him and he stepped into the miraculous. That's number two, when you get out of your comfort zone. Number three, when you step out of your comfort zone, you bless others. Now, this is the thing we all have to keep in mind. Think about Moses. <clears throat> there's a battle. I can't remember exactly who it was with. And there's a battle going down in the valley. He's up on the mountain. He's there with Aaron and her. It's a guy called her. And he's there looking down. And with his hands raised, when his hands are raised, they win in, down there in the valley. Joshua and his army, they, they start winning. But his arms get, start to get a bit sore and he puts his arms down. And then they start losing the battle. And he sees people dying. So he keeps his hands up, but it gets sore. And then they win, and he puts them down, and they start to lose. As long as Moses kept his hands up, his arms up, they won the battle. Imagine how comfortable, imagine how many hours holding his hands up. Imagine how uncomfortable that was. Yet because he was uncomfortable, people went home to their families that night. Listen, man of God, you need to learn to get comfortable being uncomfortable because through your life, other people can meet Jesus Christ. Hold your hands up, man. Hold your hands up. It's so pastor. It's hard. I know it's hard. I've, I've been doing it my whole life. But God gets the glory and people get helped. The fourth thing, there's five, I'll close real quickly. Fourth thing, you're protected from pride. When you step out of your comfort zone, you, you know, you get, you, it's very easy to be prideful in your little comfort zone, right? In your own little shell. This is my shell. I've got a bookshelf up here, and this is what I've got this. And go, go somewhere else and feel uncomfortable. Then we depend on God. Look at, sec again, this text, verse 7. Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan that buffered me. Lest I be exalted above measure. You know that thing, that thing you're struggling with now? God's just saying, yeah, keep it humble. And, uh, all right? Just chill. It keeps you humble before the Lord because we need God when we're uncomfortable, right? The fifth one, and that's back to our text, is God is with you. And that's the greatest blessing of all. Look, at, look again, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Even though I'm uncomfortable, he goes, I will not fear. Why? Because you are with me. God is with you when you're out, in the, out of your comfort zone. God was with Peter when he was walking on water. God was with Moses when he held his hands up. God did the miracle at that point. God was with Paul as Paul was preaching the gospel and winning people for Jesus Christ. Paul was with Moses in every step of the way. Paul was with, uh, God was with Abraham every step of the way. Because when you step out, that's where God steps in. And you have to understand that, church. Yes, I'm going through an uncomfortable time. I'm in a valley. But then it says, you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Now, I like this. Because if that was most of us, we'd be like, all we could see is the valley of the shadow of death. God, I've got no comfort here. But he says, I'm your comfort. This world is not our comfort. Can you say amen? It's not our home. We don't belong here. That's why it's uncomfortable, because we don't belong. We belong in heaven. And we're going to heaven. How many of you are going to heaven? You say amen. 
That's our comfort. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, for sure. But do you know how long it's going to be cool in heaven? Do you know how much it's going to be pain-free in heaven? Do you know how much rejoicing we got in heaven? This light affliction, this is no big deal. Yeah, it hurts, but who cares? God's with me. God's my comfort. Then he goes, verse 5, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I like that because we're like, yeah, God prepares a table for us without my enemies. No, in the midst of your enemies. Enemies everywhere, but God says, I'll still exalt you. I'll still be with you. Because we think comfort is no problems. Now God says, comfort is problems everywhere, but I'm in the middle. And then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank God for that. So church, I encourage you, push through those uncomfortable times. Keep going. Don't quit. Get, get out of your comfort zone. Let's see the Lord bless your life. Let's see you step on miracle ground. Let's see the Lord do wonders in these next few months. How many of you say amen to that? Let's believe God for some great things. Let's give God praise this evening. Hallelujah. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. So God, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray this evening. So appreciate all those here tonight, those watching online. Thank you.